Hi, this is Damon Card coming to you from Santa Cruz with NLP Gym. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how to practice NLP because this was one of the biggest struggles that I had when I first finished my training. And it seemed like a lot of people, a lot of the students didn't know how to practice. And it's the question I probably get most often when I do an NLP training, whether I'm teaching or I'm resource coaching for someone else. This question often comes up, well, how do we practice or how do I practice now that the training is over with? Because the truth is, <clears throat> you get a little bit of practice when you're in the class, but that's more to get a taste of it. You see that you get a little bit of lecture, typically you get a little, you get a demonstration if you have a good teacher, and then you get one opportunity to practice with a classmate, maybe one time doing the process. And that's certainly not gonna be enough to give you the skills and so what happens afterward is we don't get a lot of guidance after these trainings, oftentimes. I know different programs work in different ways, um, but most of the programs, especially in California, don't operate that way. It's basically you get the practice. They encourage you to practice outside of the training, but mainly you get the practice inside of the training, and that's it. So what I started even before I took my NLP training, well, let me back up. When I was resource coaching for some of the trainers that uh, I did my training under, people would ask me that question, well, what should I do now after the training's over with? And I said, well, definitely start an NLP practice group in, in wherever you're at, wherever town you're in, if it's a small town or a city, and start a practice group. And the response that I would get from that was, well, yeah, you can do that because you have NLP skills, you have NLP training, you know, you know what you're doing. So I understand that you start a practice group, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do that. <laughs> and I would always laugh at that and I would say, well, the truth is, is that I started a practice group before I had any NLP training at all. The reason why I did that was because I was trying to learn NLP from books. And if you've tried that before, you know that it's nearly impossible. You need uh, you can do it on yourself to a certain extent, but you need to have someone else to practice with. So I created a practice group. I went on Craigslist, I went on Meetup, I went on Facebook, and I basically created a practice group so that I could have people that I could practice with from the stuff that I was learning in books. And it worked. I got a few people, and I would we would practice most often weekly, sometimes once every two weeks. And I started that before I even started my, my first NLP training um, at all. So definitely start a practice group. Find people who are interested and there you might even find people who have no training whatsoever who are just curious about it and this is great. You, this is fine. You know, this is someone you can practice on and then when you teach it to them they will likely, you will likely learn it better. Another thing that I did was I found a partner who was in the training that I was in that happened to be Logan Christopher who I teach with and who we start, we both started NLP Gym he was very serious about it. He also lives here in Santa Cruz. And I told him about my practice group. And I also said, well, why don't you and I get together and practice once a week? And that was great. And we learned a lot from each other that way. The other thing that I did was I started the, the day after my training, my practitioner certification, I grabbed my manual and started on page one. And I started reading. And every time I would come to an exercise, I would, use, I would do that process on myself. And then when I would meet with Logan or the practice group, I would then, we would do the process together and I would learn it even better that way. And I would go through my manual. It took me an entire year to really go through that manual, read everything and practice everything three times. I went through the manual three times. Now at the same time, I was also sort of cross-pollinating with other institutes. I would go and take other practitioner trainings and so I'd get double the uh, training. But really I think the practice was the, the, the most helpful part in really getting the skills down. You can only do so much lecture, you can only learn so much from lecture, you can only learn so much from watching a highly skilled teacher do a demonstration. You really have to practice, practice it for yourself to really get it. So in addition to that, so start your practice group, start a, um, get a practice partner, <clears throat> and then definitely practice on yourself. John Grinder was quoted as saying that that's the true master of NLP as someone who is just as effective on themselves using NLP as using NLP on someone else. So that self-practice is really important. And it's also good to journal, keep a journal of your practicing. What are you learning? What are you discovering as you practice? 
And of course, keep a regular study of reading NLP books, but make sure if you're going to read an NLP book that you're using, you're applying what you're learning. You make sure you're applying it on yourself and applying it with other people when you practice. One other thing that Robert Diltz told me when I asked him about what would be good ways to practice, he said, well, you, you've already lived several years, so you have all these experiences stored up inside of you. He said, go back and recode your experience in NLP terms. Like look back on experiences where, that you've had and recognize what your positive intent was. And when you do that, also look at what your outcome was. What, what were you trying to do? Um, you can also do perceptual positions. You could go other with someone else who was in that memory and then you could go third position as well. So we'll go back through your experiences and I would say Go back through experiences that you remember that have some sort of significance to you, some sort of meaning to you. And go back through those experiences and explore all the ways that you can now bring NLP into those experiences. The more you do that, the more you will get that practice. And so what Robert told me was, you already have the 10,000 hours of practice stored inside of you. Your 10,000 hours to mastery or genius. All you have to do is go back in and recode that in NLP terms and then that will give you your 10,000 hours. Hope that's helpful. These are some of the tools that I implemented in cultivating my NLP skills and then of course eventually becoming a teacher and a trainer was an yet another way that I really learned NLP and cultivated the skills of NLP. Try them out, see how they work for you.